Hello and welcome to this new video about C programming. Today I want to show you how to determine if a string is palindrome. A palindrome is a word you read the same way in both directions, such as the word deterrated. We now see an algorithm and all possible cases, initially ignoring the fact that the C language has the string terminator character. We'll start from the base case of a string of length 1, such as A. This string can, of course, be read the same way in both directions. From this fact, we know that a string of length 1 is always palindrome. If we take a string of 4 characters, such as C, D, D, C, we can set two indices, I and J, so we can compare two characters at a time. We set i to 0 while j to the index of the last character, corresponding to 3 in this case. If we call a string s, then is s of i equal to s of j? So is s of 0 equal to s of 3? Yes. The string might still be palindrome after all. What we need to do now is to move the two indices one step towards the center of the string so i equals to 1 and j to 2. We have to repeat the same question. Is s of i equal to s of j, so is s of 1 equal to s of 2? Yes, we have to move the indices again. What we see now is that if we move our indices towards the center one more time, we obtain i equals 2 and j equals 1, so i is greater than j. If we get to this point, we are certain that the string is palindrome. Let's take another string, this time of length 5, such as C, D, A, D, C. The first two steps are the same as the previous string. However, when we get to i equals 2 and j equals 2, it means that we are dealing with the first case, i.e. string of length 1, which is always palindrome. What happens if a string is not palindrome? Let's use the word CDAC. The first step tells us that the string might after all be palindrome. In fact, we'd have S of 0 equals to S of 3. The second step, however, tells us that S of 1 differs from S of 2. So the string CDAC is not palindrome. Another algorithm to check if a string is palindrome would be to get the original, reverse it, and compare it with the original string. The problem with this approach is that it is more expensive both in time and space complexity than the algorithm we just saw, so we won't see it in this video. We now see the C implementation of the algorithm. Starting from the top, we see the stdbool.h library which we'll use in the program to answer the main question, palindrome or not? C strings end with the terminating null byte. When we set the second index, j, we must keep track of this. The string that we need to check is called array and it's 65 characters long, including the terminating byte. We then set several variables such as the two indices we've discussed earlier. To set the index j, we need to count the length of the string, excluding the terminating character, and remove 1, because indexing starts from 0. In the while loop, we implement the algorithm discussed earlier. If the two characters are equal and if i is less than j, the remaining part of the string might still be palindrome. If the two pointed characters are different, the algorithm must end and return that the string is not palindrome. On the other hand, if we get to a point where i is greater or equal than j, the algorithm must finish. Let's execute the program and see what happens. Our string is certainly palindrome. Let's see how it has been generated. To generate a random palindrome string in Python, you must need three lines of code. Once you generate the random string, you reverse its copy and append it to the original.
That's it for this video. If you want to know more about programming, like and subscribe. Bye bye.